the other end of it. We're going to count that as ambidextrous. Not everybody plays baseball. And goes, I can't swim. I don't know if I can switch it or not. I hit my roommate with both hands. <laughs> if you are mildly or severely ambidextrous when you can use either hand, subtract a point. If you kind of do think you, I mean, you're not totally, you can drink a soda or answer the phone with either hand. Or in Texas, people tend to use both thumbs. I know, and I'm old-fashioned, I use one thumb. The text version of Hunt and Pack. There! Actual Hunt and Pack. <laughs> if, you, if that's you, stand pack. If you are challenged, at using both hands, where you are severely one hand dominant, add a point. And by that, I mean if there is something sitting, if you're on the couch and there's a bag of potato chips right there, and you have to reach over with your right hand to get the chips because your left hand may not handle the transfer, add a point. My wife lovingly refers to this as left hand retarded. <laughs> Not in reference to other people, so before you get all offended that we used a bad word, it's what she calls herself, because she is severely one-hand dominant. At our dojo, we teach Japanese two-sword. Niten, that's fighting with a sword in each hand. Japanese style, where you're not using one as a buckler or small shield to just block with and then stab with the other. You use both. So it just works. If he's closest, I stab him, block her, move the other way. One of the ways we test for your attributes for that is while you're sitting there, I'll go walking by, pulling a tennis ball, and just go, zing, and throw it at your left shoulder from close range to check your reflexes. And if you go and catch it with your off hand because it's closest, you've got a good ability for being ambidextrous. If you reach all the way across your body to catch it, you're one hand dominant, and you're not going to be real safe with swords. If you're an anime con attendee, what we normally get is this. Hey! And if you're a cat lover, we get the people to go, no, get it away! <laughs> and that would be great. Okay, so, if you're the person that would reach across your body to catch it, go ahead and add a point. If you would just catch it, subtract a point. If you just look at it, if you don't know, give me a sign. I'll come by and throw something at you. <laughs> I don't have a tennis ball. It might be a chair. <laughs> I'm not sure how you're going to catch a chair with one hand, but it'll be a fun experiment. If you don't know whether you can use it, just go into the bathroom panel's over? And, no, not that. <laughs> do what you normally do. Just, and then try to do it again with the other hand. And if it seems really, really awkward like it's a stranger, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we just... And this is horrible. Stop laughing back there. <laughs> Did anybody see Gone in 60 Seconds with Nicolas Cage? No. Yeah. One. Okay. That was actually a scene from one of the guys who is now on the TV show Hawaii Five-O, talking to Nicolas Cage's best friend while they're waiting to go steal a car. And he says, this is my latest movie. I call it The Stranger. And it's a completely inappropriate thing where he sits on one of his hands and tells him, I'm going to get All right. This is what happens when I have rain and free rain to talk too much. <laughs> She's been waiting to ask a question. The answer is yes, I'm taking all of my hands. Not only am I taking mine, I'm taking hers too. That's <laughs> Pretty sure Red Bull and birth control weren't supposed to be men. <laughs> oh, why is Rachel in your room and your puppies in your mom? Because we like Rachel better. <laughs> ask your question, which deeper I'm not afraid. What she meant to say, when you tie your shoe, what difference does it make to you? Both your shoes are untied. If you tie your shoes, 
You make the loop and the bunny goes around and through and then you pull it out. For most people, they'll use one hand all the time to hold the loop in place and the other hand does the active part. Mm -hmm. All we want you to do is try to tie your shoes the other way. Yeah, I know, it's important to anime con, but people never learn to tie their shoes. Or drive a car, or me. You realize, before, look, I'm going to say these things. Do not get offended like I'm picking on you. I'm not tying my shoes either. For the same reasons. Actually, I'm not tying my shoes because we brought her this weekend. And she is very attracted to shoelaces. So I wore boots because they seem safe. All right, that was question six. Question seven. My favorite one. Question number seven. Do you sneak up on people? Now, I don't mean you're creepy. <laughs> and you just walk around and Oh! I'm surprised that didn't work. It would have worked on you. Look at that. If you find yourself sneaking up on people where they don't, you're there and they just don't know you're there regularly, I mean, if you're that person that's in the kitchen and your mom's working and you're like, ah! where did you come? Stop doing that! If you find yourself sneaking up on people all the time, I want you to subtract a point. If you're that guy who's 6'7", 250, and wears samurai armor, that makes you seven foot tall and 310 pounds, and you go planking around the convention and your guest handler still can't find you, so we're all waiting to go to dinner and they're going, where's Dan? I've been standing behind him for 15 minutes. I'm just invisible to women. It's like high school. If you are invisible on that level, did anybody see Princess Diaries? I'm invisible. I got sat on again today. My goal in life is to be invisible. But don't ask why I watch Princess Diaries. We traded off. I watched Princess Diaries and she had to watch like the Walking Dead. See, that was my excuse and I don't have a sister. I watch Princess Diaries. She used to up on people all the time, subtract the point. If it happens, because everybody has that friend that's oblivious and doesn't notice things, if you sneak up on that friend, don't change your score, okay? Everybody has that friend. But if you can never sneak up on people, you're a guy that walks into the room and everybody knows you're there. Not necessarily because you're a big mouth and you have to announce yourself, but just people give off an energy that you can walk into a room. Easiest way to explain this, back to your mom in the kitchen. If you've ever gotten home and walked into the kitchen and your mom is in there, she has her back to you, she hasn't said a word, but she's mad. See, I got laughter because you already know where I'm going. She is furious, she's not banging things around, but you walk into that room, take one step in and go, ooh, something bad's happening here, and you just leave. Sense that. There are people that have that kind of, when they walk into a room, everybody turns around and looks. There's a, if you guys know voice actors, Scott McNeil is kind of that way. From Canada, when he walks into the room, people turn, we were at a convention in Chicago once, and we walked in late to an like, all guest panel, me and him. It had already started, everybody was up front, and we walked in and we just stopped. And he's like, watch this. Nobody turned around. And he's like, dude, there's And nobody looked. And I'm about to give him crap, and the whole audience started laughing. They were told by one of the other guests sitting at the table to not acknowledge him when he walked in. Because they knew it would mess with him. But when he goes in the room, everybody knows. My goal in life is to be invisible. I kind of get, it doesn't seem that way on stage, because I'm big arm movements. I like being not recognized or not, because then you're not accountable for things. I can just hide in the back. That's me at family reunions. When we got married the first 10 years, I didn't speak. 
at their family things. She's an Iowa farm kid, and their family, the way it works is when you're gonna, if you're gonna talk, whoever gets to talk is the person who talks the loudest and interrupts them and just talks over everybody. It's like a press conference with reporters. And that's how her family does dinner. And I was raised, you don't interrupt people ever. And you don't raise your voice when you're indoors. I'm pitching my voice so people can hear. But if it's just us, this is how it's like. And if you're gonna, I'm just gonna stop because I don't wanna interrupt you, that would be rude. So for 10 years, I never spoke. All they knew about me is I was a tall martial arts guy that knows how to kill people and stands in the corner of the room and doesn't talk. They thought I was a serial killer. <laughs> I mean, we brought our parents to Anime Central in Chicago, and I got up and did my uncensored comedy panel in front of like 400 people, and they were sitting there going, who is this guy? What did you do with your husband? He's funny, and he talks. And he's dirty-minded. <laughs> well, of course I am. If you sneak up on people all the time, it's a crack of If you just sneak up on that one friend who's oblivious, stand back. That's kind of the point. If you sneak up on people unintentionally, subtract a point. That's all the, if you're playing games, that doesn't count. But if you're that personality, you just kind of have that quiet. The Japanese call it wa. It's, it's that energy in their spirit that if you get really advanced in some of the ninja stuff, they actually teach you different methods for controlling that. And it sounds dumb. It's like an overextension of key. Not that the Japanese ever take a real concept and then take it too far. <laughs> We're an anime con. All of you are going, ooh, yeah, tentacles. No, wow. I was thinking like tea ceremony. All I wanted was a drink. But they did, they, they, and they do that with Wa, where you learn to kind of change levels. And I do that, because off stage, that nobody knows me or where I am, and on stage, it's like, oh yeah, it's every day, that guy with the big mouth. Which leads us to question number eight. And my favorite, what do you cheat to win? <laughs> yeah, we're an anime con, this answer goes. Talk about that in class. 
and he raised that question to the room. Now, how many of you would do that? Would you sleep with that person for a million dollars? And one of the girls so, raised her hand and said, for a million, yes. It changed my life. And he said, well, how about you meet me after class for five bucks? <laughs> this was before the current Me Too movement, but it was still <laughs> kind of a, you are fired, buddy, that's terrible. Like, right as he offended everybody, the girl yelled at him, how dare you? What do you think I am? And he raised his hand for quiet and he said, We've already determined what you are. What we're negotiating now is price. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole room just went dead silent. And I went, Ooh. he just owned all of us. I'm like, that was a really good point, but I don't think I would risk losing my job like that to make it. <laughs> oh, yeah, if you would have made that comment to my wife, she would have shot it. <laughs> and we would have hit the body for a million dollars. So, yes.